Hey friend, this is the final lesson in our beginner's guide to watercolor. We're combining everything that I've taught you in this watercolor basic series of tutorials for a full wreath. So we're using our supplies, obviously, brush techniques, color theory, I'm talking about composition, I'm talking about compound strokes, and how to incorporate balance when something is feeling like it's tipping, color harmonies and disharmonies throughout a full composition or full piece so that you can feel confident approaching a blank sheet of paper and not just practicing strokes or practicing leaves, but actually achieving something like a wreath and painting something more confidently. So if you're ready, let's dive in. So combining everything I've taught so far in this watercolor basic series for a floral wreath um, with flowers, compound strokes with our leaves, wet and wet technique, shapes, curves, all of the things. So I'm gonna use my size six brush for this wreath and you can pencil out a circle very, very lightly for following a specific shape um, if you want to. I'm gonna freehand it and hope it works out. Um, but it's just all about doing pieces of branches and seeing how the shape is forming so that you're eyeballing it as you go. All right, so first I'm gonna start with the right side of my wreath, kind of just eyeballing where I wanna start it, kind of in the middle and coming over here to the right side. And I'm gonna do my slanted-ish hold or vertical, it's like in between hold and C curve for my first little branch that I'm gonna add leaves to. And if you're like, whoa, that's gonna be a tiny circle, don't you worry, I'm gonna start piecing over here. So even if you curve a little too far in or too over here, you can just add branches to fill it in and design the curve. So let's do some compound strokes. I'm gonna do some blue green for leaves, maybe a touch of burnt umber. And we're gonna start really dark. Then get a little bit lighter. And right here is an open space where I can either add a flower or another leaf. What I wanna make sure of as I'm going around this whole leaf though, or brant, what is this? Wreath. <laughs> this whole wreath is that I have Balance. So I've mentioned this before in this series, but balance is really important in composition. If something feels like it's tipping to one side of the or the other, it's gonna feel off to your viewers. So I wanna make sure to incorporate flowers along my entire wreath so that it feels balanced and not like it's tipping too heavy on this side with flowers and there's nothing down here. So I'm gonna paint in a little flower, maybe part of a pansy, an open-faced pansy. I'm gonna start with some cobalt, maybe a touch of Opera Rose lightly, and I'm using the side or belly of my brush to give it these little pokes here. And then using wet and wet painting to give it that darker color bleed. Got a pansy going. And maybe another pansy, but it's more purple or has more pink in the cobalt mixture. Just right here. So obviously I'm not sketching anything before. Um, this is just allowing me to practice freehand and just going for it. I'm focusing on balance and I'm focusing on shape. And you get there by developing muscle memory for all of these 
elements. So all of the florals, branches and leaves. If you're not comfortable with them individually, it's gonna be really hard for you to freehand something like this. But I'm using the curves of leaves to help guide my the shape of my wreath and noticing areas where I want some bursts of color. Purple and yellow are contrasting colors, so I'm incorporating some contrast down here. I wanna make sure to incorporate that throughout the wreath and not just have it right there. So keeping that in mind for future. And working my way up with another stem. Pressure release, pressure release. So making sure to not just have the same hue and value of all my leaves and flowers and whatever elements I'm painting, because as you can see, I've got blue green fading to yellow green and there's lighter values in between. That's gonna create a lot more movement than just using secondary green in the same value for every single leaf. So it's gonna create a lot more movement and fullness. Now I'm going to, so I've got some, with my floral elements, I've got some purples and blues um, happening. I wanna get a little bit more like rainbow vibe with all of my colors. So I'm gonna add some indigo or turquoisey color with manganese blue and a touch of Prussian blue. And maybe just do side facing flower here. And here. lemon yellow or a yellow green stem for these kind of not berries but just little buds of flowers and I'm just tapering off here and following my my circle ish, adding in little leaves to frame. Okay, we've got a nice curve. Let's start to curve across and get into some more yellow, orange, and red pinky colors for our florals eventually. So this shape, I want it to curve down a little bit more. Pressure release. Nice open area here for a fuller flower, more open flower. Maybe we do some yellow. I'm 
maybe take opera rose and cadmium orange to add the center bleed. Opera rose and lemon yellow deep for my side facing flower over here and get gradually more pink. adding stems and leaves. And as I'm starting to curve around here, I wanna see how it's filling out. If it's feeling too boxy, then I'll add little leaves here and there. We've got a really dark leaf right there, so I wanna make sure it doesn't feel too heavy or unbalanced, so I'm gonna bring a darker blue-green leaf here. And bring in some more brown. Using all the colors. Got some water droplets we're gonna cover up with some leaves. Boom. Light values, dark values, looking as you're painting for shapes, balance, where it feels like it's tipping or maybe feels too heavy. Or not dense enough. And now I'll we'll just get some more reds, pinks, and then a little more purple here to close it off. Off a rose, man, it's so bright. The pinkish pansy open right here. So with pink, it's basically like red uh, on the color wheel. Instead of adding secondary green, so just sap green next to it for my leaves, I'm gonna shift the hue a little bit more and add more yellow to the mixture. This yellow green is really gonna pop next to it because green and pink are contrasting colors, but we're not using the direct contrast with yellow green. some yellow up here because we didn't get tons of yellow it kind of became orange pretty quickly so we're gonna just do these little side facing yellows here poking out because it's also a little bit of a straight line from this leaf to that leaf so it's not curved enough or bumpy enough 
little poke in here. Little fluffs. And a bit more orange up here. These side facing flowers are so easy to just add in these tight, tight spots where it just needs a little bit more balance. And we've got a small cluster of turquoise here, but everything's out a little bit more spread out. So I'm gonna bring it down here too. So always thinking about balance in individual sections of whatever type of piece you're painting, whether it's a wreath or a full floral piece. Thinking about balance, how it's tipping, incorporating movement with value scales within one section and hue scales. All things that we've covered in this series, but pulling together for one big piece. Now let's get a little purple so we can finish it off for our rainbow wreath. Just getting gradually more and more purple by adding Prussian blue to this Opera Rose Prussian blue mixture with these side facing flowers, tulips, whatever they are. Brown stems, because it's a lot of green stems over here. Making sure my stem is pointing in line with the V of the flower. And maybe finish it off with some leaves. It's getting flat right here, so we're gonna wanna come out a little bit more to make it heavier down here. And incorporate that dark blue green. So I'm gonna make this a little darker. So I'm able to paint this a bit quicker because I am so comfortable with how these strokes are formed, compound strokes, color theory, color balance, all of that kind of stuff that it takes practice and doing it something over and over again to really understand how to incorporate it in a bigger piece like this and make it feel balanced. But any area where I feel like something is really standing out or calling too much attention, I know it's either a shape imbalance or it needs some color depth, like with values and hue variation. Just keeping that in mind. We're getting heavy down here, so we need to thicken this area out. Knowing when, when to stop is also a good thing too. So we don't wanna to get too crazy with all these fluffs around our leaves, but just looking at how it's forming, areas that feel a little like this kind, kind of comes to a point up here. 
whereas this is kind of all starting to make a circle. So I'm going to add some yellow here. Something that I always find interesting about some comments that we get or messages I receive on Instagram from people who are just starting out or maybe have never painted like this before, but they've been painting for a while is that there's a lot of people out there and I totally get why, but there's a lot of people out there that are trying to hurry the process and be further along than they should be. And maybe it's part of our culture or with social media and being able to see all of the brilliant work out there and getting discouraged with wherever you're at in your process. But I think the most important part is of getting better over time is being okay with where you're at and that like mental, um, mental muscle that you have to flex in order to not get bothered or frustrated or overwhelmed when something isn't turning out the way teachers is or the way you think it should. Um, but not letting that overwhelm or that like discouragement get the best of you because a lot of people give up when something doesn't turn out the way they want to but they don't realize that every artist has crumpled up paper in their trash can so keep that in mind and then with our final details we're going to use wet and wet painting to add little stamen areas to like this lemon yellow deep here to this pansy. Just tiny little details. You can use gouache, which is a version of watercolor. It's just more opaque if you want for this, for it to stand out a little more. But I'm just gonna use watercolor. Now, I hope that video was helpful for you. If you need further resources and research, please check out that free ebook I mentioned. Um, I have a floral watercolor ebook that goes over all the things that I covered in this series, which I cover brush techniques, supplies, color theory, everything. So if you need a guide to walk you through step-by-step step as, as you're watching these videos, make sure you go download that freebie. And then also check out my book, Everyday Watercolor, if you want a bit more in-depth color theory, and also basic shapes, compound strokes, all of the things and more in my book, Everyday Watercolor, which is an Amazon and also available in local bookstores. So make sure you check that out as well. And we just recently launched a Patreon channel where I'm going way more in depth with patrons who are spending $5 a month and up with us where we've got a Patreon only exclusive tutorial every single month going out for $5 a month and up tiers along with a live monthly art class where you can sit with me, ask me questions while I'm painting and, and teaching, um, while I'm going through things live, if you spend $10 a month and up through our tiers. So make sure you check out our Patreon, my everyday watercolor books, my freebie. Also, I have a way more in-depth watercolor course in the works. We'll link it below in the description. Right now, if you wanna join the wait list, if, it's, if it isn't open, click that link and you can find out more information on that. I hope you enjoyed this video. That was just one part of our complete beginner's guide to watercolor. So make sure you go check out that master video. It's got all the goods in it. And as always, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next tutorial.